Continuing our conversation about organelles, the mitochondria is a very important organelle that produces a large amount of cellular energy through the process of cellular respiration. They have specific adaptations that allow them to complete these tasks very well, and for the HL exam you need to know a few of these adaptations. The adaptations include a double membrane, internal folds of the membrane called cristae, and the separate compartmentalization of enzymes and substrates needed for the Krebs cycle that exists within the internal matrix of the organelle. Let's break down how these adaptations work. The double membrane is unique and contains a very small intermembrane space that separates the two components. The outer membrane separates the mitochondria from the cytoplasm and the rest of the cell's components, and the inner membrane is the location where oxidative phosphorylation occurs and houses the electron transport chain components and ATP synthase. The tiny intermembrane space is where concentration gradients are built to be used for this process which is good that it is small because the gradient can be built relatively quickly. In addition, the internal cristae folds of the inner membrane provide more surface area for oxidative phosphorylation to occur. Finally, the internal matrix holds all of the components for the Krebs cycle and link reaction. Having all of the components in one space ensures that aerobic respiration can happen quickly and energy for the cell can be produced efficiently. In addition to the mitochondria, another important organelle that plant cells have that ultimately aids in the creation of energy is the chloroplast. This organelle is used to create glucose molecules from captured light energy via the process of photosynthesis, and also has many adaptations it uses to do so. The adaptations that you need to know for the chloroplast are the large surface area of the thylakoid membrane, the small fluid volume inside the thylakoid, and the compartmentalization of enzymes and substrates to support the Calvin cycle in the stroma. The thylakoid membrane is the location of photosystem pigments that capture light energy coming in from the sun to be used for photosynthesis. So the greater the surface area of this membrane, the more light energy can be captured, which clearly is an advantage. Stacks of these membranes, called grana, show the large surface area each chloroplast can contain. Next, the internal thylakoid has a small volume, and because this is the site at which a proton concentration gradient is built, having a smaller volume means it can build the gradient relatively quickly, allowing for ATP synthase to function efficiently. And lastly, much like the internal matrix of the mitochondria, the stroma, or internal matrix of the chloroplast, houses all of the proper components needed for the Calvin cycle to function. This space, along with the thylakoid membrane spread out around the chloroplast, ensures that the process of photosynthesis works without a hitch. In addition to the presence of the nucleus having an advantage over the lack of a nucleus, like we discussed in the SL video, the unique double membrane of the nucleus has other advantages. The nuclear membrane blocks many things from getting into the nucleus, which is good. But some components like enzymes used for transcription need to enter, and molecules like messenger RNA need to exit. The double membrane of the nucleus achieves this by creating relatively large pores for these components to move through via the fusion of the inner and outer layers of phospholipids. These pores are larger than the typical protein channel and have proteins that control what substances can move through it. Additionally, the double membrane of the nucleus is versatile when it is being broken down and built up. The process of cellular division requires the nuclear membrane to break down, which it does by forming into smaller circular vesicles. When the process of mitosis is ending and the chromosomes are moved to either side of the cell, those membrane vesicles can fuse together to recreate two new nuclear membranes around each set of chromosomes. Let's talk about some additional organelles that you need to know the structures and functions of for the HL exam. First up, we have ribosomes and the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Ribosomes function to build proteins based on specific code originating from the DNA, which we discuss in greater detail when we cover transcription and translation. Within a eukaryotic cell, ribosomes can be either free-floating or attached to the endoplasmic reticulum in which we call it the rough endoplasmic reticulum because it has ribosomes attached to it. Free-floating ribosomes within the cytoplasm primarily create proteins that are used within the cytoplasm that have a vast array of functions. 
However, if a ribosome is synthesizing a protein that needs to be sent elsewhere, like a specific location within the cell, or even transported out of the cell via the help of the Golgi, the ribosome will attach to the endoplasmic reticulum. The protein created will be pushed into the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum and then be placed into a vesicle where it can then be transported. The next organelle we have is the Golgi apparatus. This structure works with products created from the rough endoplasmic reticulum and can modify and package proteins that are then sent to a final specific location within the cell or outside of the cell. The Golgi creates the final vesicle needed for this transport to happen. The modification function of the Golgi can alter the protein from the rough endoplasmic reticulum before it is shipped off in its final vesicle, which could mean adding phosphate or sulfate groups to the protein or attaching sugar chains to make it a glycolipid molecule. In any case, the final modifications are done as the protein makes its way through the folded membranes of the Golgi and emerges out the other end in a separate vesicle. We have mentioned the term vesicle quite a bit now as a membrane-bound substance that is able to move content around a cell, but we have not discussed how it is actually created. If an organelle like the endoplasmic reticulum or the Golgi need to move molecules around the cell, they can use vesicles to do so, but need to create these vesicles using their own organelle membranes. To create the vesicle, a piece of their membrane needs to be pinched off and encase the substance. This process is supported by a protein called clathrin which initiates the indenting of the membrane when multiple clathrin proteins bind to each other. The proteins continue to bind and manifest into a lattice of pentagons or hectagons which form a cage around the membrane of the vesicle, supporting its creation. Before the vesicle can fuse with its target membrane, the clathrin cage structure will break off and uncoat the vesicle, allowing the membrane of the vesicle to connect to its final location, and deliver either the transported materials inside or pieces of the membrane itself if the cell or organelles are growing in size and need additional phospholipids and membrane proteins to function. 